Welcome to the Vision of Leadership podcast. I'm Ted McRoy, and today I have a returning guest, Dr. Haley Perry. Many of you may remember from an episode we did about a year ago, she is the proud owner of Elite Eye Care in uh, Arden, North Carolina, which is just right outside of, of uh, oh shoot, Haley, tell me what's, what's the name of the town? I'm going blank. Asheville, Asheville, Asheville North yeah. Carolina. <laughs> totally went blank. My bad. Um, Haley and I are both Disney freaks, and uh, we're going to get a chance to see each other in a couple of weeks at a meeting down in Orlando, and I can't wait. I'm so excited about that. And uh, we've we had a good time, you and I, running around Disneyland together a few years ago. So this will be kind of taking it to the East Coast, whoop, whoop, you know. And I'm uh, I'm really excited about that. So Haley, the reason I had Haley come on today, uh, there was a thread that went through a group of us uh, in optometry for something called the Business of Optometry uh, website, or excuse me, thread that's done through something that Vision Source is doing, and it's a really great program that. Lori Sorensen and Mick Kling are doing, basically teaching us how to do our businesses better. And each day there are just all these really cool pieces of information that pop up. And Lori posted a question, is anybody using uh, AI in your practice? And if so, how are you using it? And Haley just basically downloaded just tons of things that she was doing, not the least of which, and the coolest, which we gave us a nice little joke a few minutes ago. Um, she said, every time I have an article that I don't quite understand, I go online, find the PDF version of it, cut and paste it into, into chat GPT and said, read this to me like I'm a, th- like I'm a toddler. And I did this. And let me tell you something, folks. It was not only was it really informative and very helpful to read. It also started off with, okay, buddy, when you're talking about glaucoma, it was really <laughs> neat. So, uh, Haley, thank you for being on this. And, and really the, the, the other thing about these large language models like chat GPT and others, the uh, uh, people are kind of scared of it a little bit, I think, you know, so what was it that made you try this for, I mean, 86% of Americans, according to a guy named John or Jordan Ellenberg have never tried this before. So what was it that made you say, Hey, I got to try this. Well, so first of all, I kind of feel like, so I was in high school when the internet was really like starting to become a thing. I remember when, you know, um, seeing that everything had a website and I kind of feel like this is our internet. Like this is this generation's, you know, new huge thing that's going to change your life. Um, but how I got into it was I, um, I had heard through some lectures, um, actually it was the AI involved in, uh, with making the Verilux XR, the new lenses mm-hmm. with Essilor. And um, talking about AI, and in the lecture talking about that, they were talking about ChatGPT, and and they were like, you know, you can ask ChatGPT questions, and they were they were talking about it in reference to, you know, their lecture. And so I, I had I googled like ChatGPT, like what is this? And this was maybe, I don't know, three months ago. Um, and so it, it found out it was free. I'm like, well, hey, I got nothing to lose. Also, those thoughts though went through my head like. Hmm, like, what am I sharing here? If I sign up, like, what's going to happen? So, I mean, I, I understand all of those kind of fears. Um, but so, anyway, just kind of started messing around with it, um, just really for fun at first. And then um, the first thing I did was respond to Google reviews. That's um, I copied a paste, I copied a patient's Google review into um, ChatGPT, and I said, respond to this five star Google review. Basically, just because I had. I had not done it in a while. I had like, I don't know, two, I had, I had a lot of reviews to respond to. Um, and it just did it. And it used language that wasn't too outside the realm of what I would call normal for a response from me. Um, some of them were a little, I call it, I call it floral. So I asked it to like, you know, tone it down some, make it sound a little more casual. Um, and it did that too. Um, so that's, that's kind of what started it for me was just responding to these reviews on Google. Um, and then I think, you know, how our phones sort of listen to us or whatever. I think I was talking to someone about it and I was marketed to through Instagram for some chat GPT prompts. Um, you also get emails whenever you are with chat GPT, they'll send you emails of prompts, examples. Um, and so I, that's when I really started realizing like what that could do. Um, and it really blossomed from there as far as, um, the applications. And I think, 
I don't know. I want to know what other people are doing because I think we're going to find something all the time that it is going to help make life easier for. So. So what do you think some are some of the drawbacks or, or sort of some of the stumbling blocks that people have? What is it that makes them scared of using a tool like this uh, to, to move into a, this new realm of things? So my friend, so I've, I've talked before I ever brought it to the, um, the thread, the optometry thread, we were um, talking about this in my friend group and I was telling them um, <laughs> my favorite thing that I've done probably is voice detected what's in my kitchen, what's in my kitchen cabinets, my freezer, and my refrigerator, and said, make a meal plan for this week using only what I have for two kids and two adults. For That's awesome. And, and it just did it. Um, it's amazing. <laughs> so I was telling my friends that. Um, and I have friends. So one friend that's in marketing, she's like, you know, my industry is afraid of this because it, that we are afraid it is going to make us obsolete. So that was one um, stumbling block. Another was, um, I won't even use TikTok because I don't know what's being shared with who and what country and that kind of stuff. And so I don't feel that way because I'm already being listened to on the regular. <laughs> I mean, right. so that's where... I don't know how much more intimate something could get than this right here. Um, right. So that's where, you know, knowing that this has limitations as far as um, it's not HIPAA compliant. I would not put my social security number in there. Um, some stuff like that. That's where I am only using it to improve my life. It is an it is augmenting my intelligence. And, and so that's, that's another thing too. It's termed artificial intelligence. The same guy, Jordan Ellenberg said he was going to trademark the phrase artificial mediocrity because that's what he really feels like it is. And a lot of this is kind of regurgitating. I mean, it's somebody had to program this instrument to do this. I mean, that's, that's one thing, you know, and part of it is looking up stuff on the internet and becoming but is it really learning or is it just really compiling data that's already there? I mean, it's, you know, I mean, you see what I'm saying? I mean, how, how does it, is it really learning is my, I guess my, my question. So I'm just an eye doctor. I'm not an IT person. I understand. But my, my, my feelings on that are that it does learn how you want it to learn, I guess. So if you say things in a certain way or you are constantly telling it and giving it feedback about how you feel that it's doing, it does twerk like, you know, it's responses. Now, this is not a glorified Google. Like anybody can go to Google and ask Google stuff. But and so right. and, and it's going to do that. It's going to do that, too, at least to the best of its capability up to like 2021, I think, is its date that it says it's up to date. So that's where like um, if you. Well, so I can tell you, we'll go into a few things later, but like basically the best thing that I found for it, I'm, I'm not asking it questions that I could just go to Google for. I'm feeding it information and then asking it questions about analyzing the information. That's, that's where I found its biggest um, benefit. Okay. I mean, and I realize, you know, I'm, I'm dealing with a lot of confirmation bias and things like that, because now that I'm thinking about this, it seems like the last two weeks I've heard nothing but podcasts on artificial intelligence and things like that. And, and this episode I keep referring back to with Jordan Ellenberg was a rule breakers podcast, which is a motley fool, um, in their, under their umbrella. And, and then the very next episode of rule breakers was um, this whole month is nothing but authors in August. Typically they do investing type kind of conversations on this pro podcast. And the next author they had was a guy named uh, Amor Tolls who wrote a book recently called the Lincoln highway. And he's got another book that he did many years ago. I think it's a gentleman in Moscow or something like that. It's about this guy who goes to Moscow and gets um, taken a prisoner uh, as a, a dissident potentially. And he's, basically confined to a hotel room for 20 years and how his life goes through. He's a gentleman in Moscow. So that's the name of the book. And they're actually going to do a, a mini series about this, I think on Showtime here soon. But he was talking about uh, AI with some friends of his because he's a writer and he was concerned about the same thing. Your friend was talking about how it's going to make it harder for them. And, 
the question was asked of him is, you know, what's the opportunity here? What's the buy, sell, or hold on someone writing a, an entire novel that's worth buying? You know, he said, I'm going to give it a hold. I'm not going to give a sell or a buy. He said, I was at dinner with a friend of mine a couple of weeks ago. And at the end of dinner, we were talking about this kind of thing. And he said, let me show you something really cool. And he pulls out his phone, goes to chat GBT and says, create a, an, a, a short story about two men having dinner at this particular restaurant they were at told in a style that Amor, Amor Tolls would use to write. And he said, I got to say, it was kind of scary because it, it captured a lot of the way that I do phrase things when I create a novel. You know, and he says, do I think it's going to, you know, create people who are actually going to do these novels? Maybe not, but could they have this information and then now overwrite what comes out of it with their own voice? And it might get you there faster. Um, he said, I kind of look at it as it, it, it eliminates the tedious is what, what I kind of think it does. Yeah. And I think that's a lot what you've discovered is it has eliminated the tedious for you. Yes. I mean, the, it just, it makes me feel so much more productive because I, w- I will say, I don't know. I, I, um, I have, and also I have, I have two kids that have dyslexia and I can't help but think that maybe that apple doesn't fall very far from that tree. Um, and so that's where I, um, I, I, I misspell things all the time. I leave commas and periods out all the time. I um, I love to voice to text just because the tedious act of my fingers having to come up with what I'm trying to think of and say. Um, yeah. And so all of that has felt very seamless with doing this this way. Um, and then analyzing like spreadsheets, for example, um, all, all of that. Yeah, it, that's exactly what it does. It takes the tedious and it just automates it and it lets you go on and I think that's really the future of this as far as like you know the question comes about of like well, is this going to replace us like what are we going to be I think of it like Rosie for the Jetsons instead of the Terminator like I think it's just going to like make my life better you know um but that's where I um I feel infinitely more productive as a human <laughs> as an intelligent human um with this as my sidekick but it, it you know who knows what the future is going to future is going to do. I do think it's just going to get better and better and better. Um, I think we will be not clicking on boxes and, and, um, you know, making comp typing comments in our EMR. I think it's something where we'll say, you know, go to the biomicroscope portion of the exam and note that there are, there's, you know, trichiasis on the right lower lid. You know, I'm just thinking of a patient. Yeah, understood. Yeah. I think you're just going to say it and it's just going to know where to go and it's just going to put it there. Um, and I'm really excited about that. So we'll see where it takes us. So then, and I want to dig into this a little bit. So can, I want to have everybody to see what she's talking about too. And for those of you that are listening on the podcast, I apologize. We're going to be as descriptive as we can, but there's going to be a YouTube version of this that'll come out also on iCode media. If you go to YouTube and type in iCode media, you'll be able to see this in video form as well. And I'm going to have Haley share her screen and show us some of the things that she's doing. And, but as you're doing this, Haley, please, for the audience, because, you know, nothing is better for, a, a, you know, a, a spoken voice thing than a bunch of pictures that no one can see. Yeah. So kind of let's walk through this and um, and tell us what you're what you're getting out of it. OK. All right. Let me get let me get to my. And for those also, we've we have just discovered that we can actually share the screen with this platform that we're using. So that's, that's another thing that's kind of got us a little bit differently. So can you see what I've got up right now? It's, it's coming up actually. It says, but yeah, it'll, it, it, I haven't gotten there yet, but you can go ahead and go. Okay. So I, um, just to kind of show you, I've been doing this a lot. I, you can have, you have a chat and you can start a new chat every single time you want to. Um, there's a box that says new chat up in the top left part of the screen. Um, but basically what you're doing is you're making, prompts that's what they call it is you're making a, a chat gpt prompt and so you're going to prompt it to do something for you um so i have tried to organize my chats um based on um room i'm room mom for my daughter's third grade class this i've got one for my staff i have one for contracts and i can tell you how i've done all of these some of which i want to show you but some of which i i won't 
Um, well, I totally understand. You might not want to get into contractual obligations and, and all that kind yeah. of stuff on the. But so, like, yeah. I'm just going to click on. I've, I've got a chat called Website Updates. Now, I will say, when when you've been in one chat for a very long time, um, then it does kind of get slower and kind of bogged down. That's one thing I found. But starting a new chat, and it's you know it it gets quicker again. But the reason why I like doing a chat and one category in a chat is that it does learn more what you're, the nuances of what you're talking about. Um, and that lets, you know, like, like I told you earlier, I do think that it learns. Um, so here's one for website updates, for example, like if you wanted to write, I, I wrote, write a blog about glaucoma. Um, and it created the title, Understanding Glaucoma, The Silent Thief, Thief of Sight. And this is 100%, it has come up with this on its own. Um, so introduction, when it comes to eye health, there's one condition that often goes unnoticed until irreversible damage has occurred, glaucoma. It goes into what glaucoma is, the different types of glaucoma, all of these of which are, are you know, sound um, as far as content goes. It's not telling anything that's crazy here. But in, right. in one sentence, I have a blog about glaucoma. And this is original content. It's not pulled verbatim from a website somewhere. Um, that's the dangerous thing I think about that makes it dangerous for like college students and writing papers and that kind of thing. Um, so that's, yeah, not my realm to worry about, but I can understand where, where teachers are going to be like, Oh gosh. Um, but, so, but come on, Haley. I mean, the math people have been dealing with this for years. I mean, they've had, you know, math problems where you could go on, look on this stuff up online. I mean, this is just, just this is the rest of education just cashing up with math. I, I mean, let's face it. Fair enough. I mean, that's where, like, I don't see why this can't be a skeleton and you go in and, you know, add it flair, like you said about the author you were talking about. Um, so I have another chat called Contract Stuff. I'll tell you what I did with this one recently. So, um, and I don't think my landlord from my office listen will listen to this. So that's why I'm going to be really candid. <laughs> and it's fine if he does. Um, so my lease says that anything HVAC related is my responsibility. I was really upset about that. I had to replace my air conditioner. I signed up for that. Like, why yes. did I not? Why did I sign up for that? Okay. So now if I had a chat GPT back in the day, I'd be like, what do I need to watch out for? Um, but now, um, so anyway, I had to do that. But um, my hot water heater at the office just recently, recently went out. That is not HVAC and that is not involved. That's, that's inside the office. And my landlord said, it's inside the office. It's like your lights. I provide the... I provide the equipment and you use it and you have to replace it. And so I go to uh, upload my lease to con to this chat and I say, mm -hmm. do I do is it specified that things inside are all my responsibility? And ultimately the answer was no. It's not necessarily that. I could I could argue that with him. I don't know that like the legal legality of chat GPT is going to hold up in court or if I could threaten him with it if he wouldn't even know what it was, but um I, you know, if you can you feed it the information, so I fed it my con my lease, and then you ask it questions about the information that you've given it, and it, you don't have to look through forty two pages or at forty two, you don't have to look through all the pages of of you know whatever you fed to it. Um, so I loved that 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 saved me a ton of time. Um, I have one for my staff, so right now I'm reorganizing my roles, and so um, it's going to take a second to come up, but basically it's like give me I I can say. Give me the roles of an office manager in an optometric practice. And it would do that. And then I can, I have fed it to my front desk, my opticians, my, my fr office manager. Um, and I've said, you know, what roles are overlapping here? Just so that I could help kind of make it very clear about this is really your responsibility and not her responsibility, that kind of thing. Um, so it helps with that. Um, it can help with creating schedules for people. You can tell it to create a to-do list that for things that would involve cleaning the office and it would, you know, give you a step-by-step. -step. In fact, let's just do something like that. Um, I don't know. Ted, do you have anything you want to, what's something we can do? <laughs> um, it's infinite. The possibilities are infinite. Yeah. Um, create a checklist for the closing up the office at the evening or something like that. For closing procedures for the office. Um, and then you can make it really specific, like make sure to include turning off the alarm and turning or on the alarm. Or, yeah, turning on the alarm. Yeah, not when you leave. 
on the alarm and turning up the air conditioning. I don't know. Let's see what it says. Okay, so this is an example of where the chat that I've been using is too is too old. So I'm gonna go to a new one. Okay. Um, new chat. Yeah. So create closing day of day procedures for. Let's do this. Let's do front desk personnel. How do you spell personnel? See, I'm dyslexic. <laughs> L L. Yeah. It, yeah. I used I use a right click and change is what I use. That's how I spell. Yeah. Um, all right. Create closing day procedures for front desk personnel at Optometric Office. Include um, end of day financial reports. Let's make it really specific. And um, turning on the alarm. Okay. Let's just see what it says. So you have Chat GPT Plus. I notice. Is that the paid version? Uh, yes. It's twenty dollars. I think twenty dollars a month, which I find helpful. I'll tell you why. So, is it faster? It is faster. And sometimes just like the, the 3.5 version can go kind of slow. And sometimes yeah. it just crashes all together and you can't use it at all because there's so many people on it. Um, and the 4.0 mm -hmm. version is a little, it thinks about things in a little more complex way. And you can kind of tell. Um, but so anyway, yeah, I, I thought it was worth it. I'm using it so much. Um, I decided it was worth paying for it. Um, so what it told us. Closing of day procedures for optometric office front desk personnel. Step one, patient checkout and scheduling. Complete all patient, patient checkout procedures, including collecting outstanding balances and copays, fees for services rendered, assist patients in scheduling follow-up appointments and confirm any upcoming blah, blah, blah. Um, so verifying closed registers, it gives you steps for that. Process credit card transactions, it gives you steps for that. Prepare end of day financial re reports. Uh, record other financial transactions, organize patient records, secure the premises, general workspace cleanup, communication and handover. Um, so, all right, so this is very general, right? You would think that like this is pretty much anybody. Yeah. So I had someone send me this one and I thought it was amazing. Um, create. But, but, but uh, I would, before you, I mean, you can do that. I want to, I want everybody to understand two things here. First of all, this thing pumped out all this text in the span of about, two minutes while actually Haley and I were just talking about the other stuff and all of a sudden it popped in there. It gave you a really nice framework for something. If you wanted to go back and edit this, you could cut and paste it. And yes, there's a couple of little funky things you may have to learn how to do to take all the gray bars off and all that kind of stuff. But it, it, it still gives you this framework of information that you can put in and start some sort of a, a system in place without having to go, well, what else do I got to think of? You know, and cause I mean, when you asked me a minute ago, come up with a, you know, I, I've struggled just to come up with something to tell you to type yeah. in there and, you know, think about what it's like when you're really going through this for real. Yeah. Well, that's where someone's, someone sent me this prompt and I thought it was so valuable. By the way, th this is just kind of funny. This is where this is not perfection. Okay. So I wanted to show you this. Mm -hmm. um, I am so used to doing my charts in chat GPT that it is used to outputting it in the soap format. <laughs> soap format. <laughs> <laughs> so at the very end of this, like procedures for the front desk personnel, it says subjective, all patient transactions, payments, scheduling are completed for the day. Objective, total revenue is calculated. <laughs> I mean, it's so funny. That's yeah, amazing. and it tried to give me an ICD-10 code. I don't even know what that ICD-10 code is. Encounter for other specified That's administrative awesome. purpose. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's funny. So, you know, if you want to get paid for this, you can, you know, submit this to Medicare. Maybe you get a dollar yeah, or two. Yeah, right. Um, okay, so this I thought this was really good, and this was really impressive when I when I did it. So, um, create a plan for onboarding an optometric technician. And so I want to add, consider that you that this person has never worked in eye care before, and I need them to be fully onboarded. Let's say two weeks. Um, all right, let's just see what it says. Okay. Optometric technician, yeah. optometric technician onboarding plan. Duration, two weeks. Week one, introduction to eye care and office operations. Okay, no, that went really quickly. Um, day one, welcome to the new technician. Provide an office tour. Introduce them to the team. All right, so it's breaking it down like real, you know. Yeah, yep. basic. And then, um, you know, once we get, let's say week two, let's go to day seven, eight. Provide hands-on practice for the technician to perform tests under supervision. All right. So here's what I would do. If you're going to make some sort of, what I love about this is it does give you, here's a skeleton plan, but I would go back in mm -hmm. and say, 
I'm going to copy day seven and eight, which says provide hands-on practice for the technician to perform tests under supervision. All right. So let's say, because that sounds, again, that could be for any, any, anybody, any um, specialty, but I want it to be very, very specific. So I'm going to break it down anymore. Provide hands-on practice for the technician. Okay. I'm going to say, um, go more in depth. Go more in depth with this bullet point. Make sure to be very specific about what tests would be expected to be able to be completed at this time. All right, let's just see what it says. And again, this takes two seconds. Two seconds, and it has spit out for me that on day seven, hands-on practice, they're going to show me autorefractor and keratometry in the morning, day seven morning, by the way. Um, explain the purpose of autorefraction and keratometry measurements. Demonstrate pro proper positioning of the patient and the instrument. Guide the technician in performing autorefraction and keratometry under supervision. Tonometry, day seven in the afternoon. Day eight, test accuracy and troubleshooting, visual fields, retinal imaging. Um, and you can even go even further. Here, here's another thing. All right, watch this. Uh, so it's, it's saying test accuracy and troubleshooting. So for visual fields, explain the purpose of visual field testing and its relevance in diagnosing conditions like glaucoma. All right, so I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to say, give me a script for, and then paste it. The, explain the purpose for glaucoma, yada, yeah. yada, yada. And so, it's, and so okay. hello, and your patient's name is in quotations. Today, I'd like to take a moment to explain the importance of a test called visual field testing and how it plays a crucial role in assessing the health of your eyes. So you can make scripts for what you want your, your staff to say as far as, and it gets very specific about the test. Um, and, and again, this knowledge of this is up to 2021. So any p new piece of equipment that's come out, it might not have knowledge about how to explain it. Although you can, you can look for some, look for a website and copy and paste what it is and what it does into chat GPT and then say, make me a script for how I would explain this to a patient. It would do that. Um, that's the crazy thing about this is that we're just kind of, we're just thinking stuff up right now. I need to see what other people are thinking up so that I can, you know, do some of the things that, that they're doing. Um, Cause the possibilities are just endless. <laughs> so let's say you're a consumer, for instance, and you want to know, you know uh, what the, cause again, we're talking 2021 here. So we're going to have to backdate a little bit in our head. Um, what are the benefits of wearing a, um, a biofinity energist lens for a myopic patient or patient who's nearsighted. That's what they're going to say. A patient who's nearsighted. And let's, um, do you want me to, do you want me to, to explain it to you? Like you're a toddler? <laughs> well, no, let's, I mean, let's That's just, first of all, let's look at it like a, yeah. It's like just somebody who's, I mean, cause that's the, what one of our guests is going to yeah. do. So it says, um, all right, hold on. I'd, I'd be glad to provide information. Okay. Benefits of biofinity energy lenses for nearsighted patients. Number one, vision correction. Biofinity energy lenses are designed to correct nearsightedness, myopia, allowing patients to see distance objects more clearly. These lenses provide vision correction similar to traditional contact lenses. Number two, digital device comfort. Um, and then it goes into all of the different things that it's useful for as far as digital screens are concerned, then digital zone optics. Um, it, I mean, it's very specific about how right. great it is and why it's great. So now let's take that and explain it to a three-year-old. Okay. I mean, take that just, you know. Okay, rewrite that and explain it to me like I'm in... Okay, this is okay. ADD three-year-old. Make it concise. Very good, yeah. Imagine you have trouble seeing things that are far away. Biofinity Energis lenses are like special glasses for your eyes. They're super good for when you use phones or tablets a lot. <laughs> they make your eyes feel better and not tired when you look at screens. <laughs> oh, it's so funny. I mean... It is, but it, I mean, again, it's taking, it's taking this tediousness of having to understand 
stuff that's kind of not understandable and making it understandable. Yeah. Went, you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay, now we're going to explain it to grandma. Oh, okay, great. This will be great. That, like I'm explaining it to my grandma. Imagine you have difficulty seeing. Okay, this is very simple. It's like, this is not funny. <laughs> this is not funny at all. It's basically the same thing, but it's just shorter. But I've yeah. done it where I've, I've told it to write it to me like I'm a teenager. You know, like you want it to be basic, but... Um, yeah. And, or an adolescent or a pre, preteen. Like I've done it at all different levels. Um, my, but my favorite story about that was when the conversation about MIPS came up um, in the past month or so. I could not. You're, you're welcome. Yes, Thank you. I'm yeah, glad I said that. I could not yeah. remember what MIPS even was. And so I copied and pasted from the CMS website just because, you know, it's I didn't know how at the time I didn't know if it would know, you know, current information or not. So anyway, copy and pasted from CMS. Um, and, you know, explain this to me like I'm a toddler. And that was what was so fun. That was the first time I used that kind of language with the prompt. Um, and, but anyway, I understood it. I completely understood it. And then I also, because I had copied and pasted the uh, requirements into chat GPT, I typed in how big my practice is and how much Medicare we do. And I asked it if I was, if I had to be, if I had to participate and it said that I didn't. So, um, you know, I didn't have to go and read through all of that information, um, all that government language is what it feels like, um, to be able to decide if I needed to, you know, worry about it. Yeah. And I mean, let's face it. Some of us are paying a third party to do it for us when, you know, you might not even have to do it at all. So having that, you know, and and of course you want to fact check this after you take it. I mean, you you definitely do that because I wouldn't take this as gospel. But wow, I mean, you know, it, so here's the funny thing that happened. It's kind of a sidebar. I'm I'm driving to one of our Vision Source members' offices today to go uh, spend some time with her in her office and and learn some things and just see what's going on. And I'm driving through rural South Georgia, and I drive past this sign. I've read, seen it before, but I never thought about it. And it's the title of the sign says, and it's got the arrow pointing, you know, turn here, Georgia Rural Telephone Museum. There's actually a Georgia rural telephone museum. And I thought, you know, think about what's inside that, that space. I mean, I don't have a landline in my, off- in my house anymore. You know, my landlines quote unquote in my office are all running through the internet. They don't run through a phone line yeah. anymore. Um, you know, she said that she had a guest say to her recently, wow, things have really changed a lot in eye care since the last time I had my eyes examined it was like five years. This patient had been between and, and I th- the first thing that popped in my head was, you know, it's changed more in the last five years than it did in the first 25 before that for me, you know, and it's going to continue to keep doing that. So as fast as this stuff is changing, it's, it's important to have somebody who can give us some information quickly, you know, and again, I'm going to use air quotes here. It's, it's accurate to a certain mm-hmm. level. It's accurate to 2021. It's still accurate to whatever they put. It's junk in, junk out. Ladies and gentlemen, you have to understand that. But it still helps. So with all that in mind, I mean, is there stuff we just don't need to know how to do anymore? Well, that's, um, that's an interesting concept to think about. Well, one of the things I think, um, wh- one, one thing I was thinking about earlier is that there may be some positions that are not or I think this is the fear, like my friend, the marketing, the marketing person, um, is that there's a, a, a fear of losing your job, right? Like this is going to take over my job and I'm not going to be able to make, in, make money for my family. But you think about the invention of the internet in and of itself, that spurred a whole new set of people who were professionals for web design, IT professionals, and then social media. Um, I mean, I just think that this is going to, I don't, I don't, there's going to be a lot of things that we're not going to have to do. We're not going to have to think about because it's just going to do it for us. Yeah. And I think that's going to be empowering though. I think that's going to be hugely empowering, but, but it's, there's going to be some pain points in the beginning, I think for sure. Yeah. You know, technology has constantly made other jobs obsolete. It, it just, it does. But the jobs that it helps create are more technical is not the right word are more advanced. They tend to pay more. They, t- we tend to, you know, do these at a higher level and a higher wage. But my, my question, I guess, is are we going to continue to innovate our way out of the machine replacements of us as a workforce? 
And that goes back to your quite your, you know, fear that your friend was talking about in marketing. Um, the one thing I think that these things don't do really well though, is the human element oh, side of things, even if it does say, okay, yeah, buddy. Right. There's no emotion. Yeah. I mean, you know, it can't, no. it can't think about, um, yeah. It, it, so that's where like, I think that there's going to be a huge amount of, um, when I, when I ask it, you know, in preparing for this podcast, I ask it, you know, what do you think the future is for chat GPT and careers? And it said that it, it feels like, it feels like, isn't that funny that I'm, I'm talking to it like it's a person. Um, it feels like there's going to be a bigger emphasis on careers in the human element as far as, you know, psychology. And obviously there's an art in psychology to, you know, being a doctor. Um, so anything that has the human element, that's going to, you know, continue to shine. But anything that's mundane um, as far as like studying uh, tedious tasks. So accounting is going to look a little bit different. I think obviously marketing is going to look a little bit different. But I think that this is you're just going to be a, become a person that is an accountant that uses this exceptionally well. Does that make sense? I don't even know if I'm making sense. <laughs> No, it does. I mean, I think I think a lot, all these technologies, I mean, every single piece of technology that we brought into our businesses is really to support us. It is not to replace us. Yes, it does allow us to do things differently and maybe faster, which some might argue, okay, if you can do it faster, maybe you shouldn't get paid as much. But it allows us to do more of those things more units, I'm really dumbing it down. I mean, more guests, maybe perhaps however you want to say that. But for me, what I have done a lot of times with the technology that we brought in is it's given me the time to sit down and have conversations with my guests a lot more often as opposed to just trying to get the data or just trying to figure out what's going on. And I can have that sit down and, and you know, machines are going to have a really tough time with empathy, which is – you know, basically the ability to discern what somebody else is thinking or feeling. Um, I, I've, I've gotten to where, and maybe you've had this happen to you too. You've gotten on a zoom call or something like that with a rep and they throw up their slide deck and they take their picture down. And it really bothers me that their pictures. No, I mean, my picture's still up on the screen. It bothers me that their picture's not there because there's so much I learn from just watching their facial features and, and how they are reacting to what they're doing that I'm missing out on it. I'm, I'm getting ready to say to people from now on, when you get on screen with me, if you're just going to keep your picture, you know, like just your still frame picture or whatever, that's not going to work. We're going to have to, I'm going to have to have you live on here. Well, now's not the time my house is, I don't care, whatever that is. Well, just find a better time where you can do this because I can't, I have to see you yeah. when we're talking. Um, you know, and because otherwise we are falling into a trap of what, this is yeah. doing for well, I mean, us. I mean that that whole human element and keeping that. If we're gonna, that is the thing as far as like technology is that you're if you're gonna keep the human element, you do have to see continue to see the face. And and what you talked about with like how you're using your technology in your office, the thing that you're valuing valuing so much is that human element, and you're taking away all this tedious um, minutia of it's not minutia. Obviously, it's very important, but it's certainly not the be all end all of like affecting the patient outcome if you're trying to find the place to put the tonometry reading or whatever. Um, that's where like, I can't wait until this is so automated and I will go into that more later of how I've sort of automated my patient charts. Um, but I can't wait till this is so automated that I can do nothing but just really focus on the, on your, on your face and do nothing but talk to you, talk to you because I like to talk anyway. So let's talk about how you've automated your charting because that was the thing that really kind of blew yeah. me away. So, okay. Let's well, dig so, there. All right. I was going to, let me go, let me go to that first. Okay. If it's going to work, I may need to start a new chat. Okay. So basically I will, I'm going to turn on my voice to text real quick and let's see. I don't know if this will work actually. Let me see. Yeah. Um, all right. So I'm going to talk to you. Okay. It is working. I'm going to talk to you like you're my patient and you are here for, um, your glaucoma evaluation. We've just done a, an OCT for your, on your optic nerve. And before I go actually come in here to talk to you, I'm going to assess your OCT for your right eye. Um, nerve fiber layer is thin superiorly, mildly thin temporally. Um, the tester is reliable and 
it appears stable on change analysis over the past five scans, uh, period. I, I throw that in there every once in a while. Um, left eye is uh, assessment for the OCT for the left eye. Optic nerve is, uh, nerve fiber layer is, I'm not looking at it, so obviously I'm just making this up. Um, then inferiorly, um, normal in all other quadrants. Um, it appears stable over the past three scans. Um, and then I'll say central thick, oh no, that's not what I'll say. Um, IOP today is 18. This is improved. The patient's taking Lumigan. All right, so I'm going to stop. So first of all, this is my voice to text. I'm using a Surface Pro right now. This is my mm -hmm. voice. Let me make sure it's coming across. Yeah, okay. Um, so this is my voice to text of, um, you know, there's no punctuation here. I said Lumigan. It said right. Lime again. <laughs> um, so mm -hmm. I'm just going to say at the beginning of this, turn the following information into a medical chart using SOAP format. All right. Let's just see what it comes up with. Did you have to teach it I SOAP did not. format? It knew what a SOAP format was. Now, so this is not wow. perfect. I will say it's not going to be, it's not perfect, but True. I don't have to, I just, I have been able to, I, so I take this into the room with me with a patient and I turn on voice to text. So I'm not recording anybody's voice. By the way, also, I'm not using a patient's name because this is not HIPAA compliant. So I, um, True. actually what I do is at the beginning of my day, I have a Google doc um, that's on my tablet and I am voice to texting, looking through charts, what they're coming in for and things I want to watch out for. And then I'm using those little tidbits. I sort of copy and paste that tidbit of what I said in the, the morning whenever before I ever start seeing patients. That's sort of the first thing I paste. And then I walk into the room and then I just talk to the patient. Does that make sense? So I've, I, I'm doing like, yeah. you know, two minutes of review of the chart. Um, and then that lets me do a review of what I want to say or know before I walk into the room. And then I turn on voice to text and I just talk to them about the test that we've done. Um, outcomes. Sometimes we talk about their kids, um, you know, whatever. And then it turns it into soap format for me. And then I will go in and copy and paste this part into the right eyes assessment. Obviously, um, you have to document medical necessity. I'm not necessarily looking at a patient and saying presence of <laughs> presence of elevated intraocular pressure necessitates right. whatever. So that's where like there's some limitations to that. But um, at the end of the day. Um, if I need to run, but I want to make my, sure my charts are complete, I have a full day's worth of voice to texted notes um, that I can eventually do put into chat GPT. And then, and then it just makes it, turns it into this chart for me. And I love that. Wow. Yeah. I mean, this is so So it'll, it's So basically just for people who are listening, um, it ha says subje subjective patient presents for glaucoma evaluation. OCT results for both eyes have been assessed prior to our conversation. The objective, it tells the assessment for the OCT for the right eye, um, the left eye. And then the assessment is glaucoma. Um, evaluate. It says glaucoma evaluation conducted. So that's where obviously that's not like a valid assessment. Um, but you can right. then in the plan, it'll say continue monitoring OCTs regularly, maintain current IOP, encourage consistent use of Lyme. <laughs> so that's where, like I said, li <laughs> please. Yes. No Lyme in the eyes. I, I, I've got enough business today. I'm but not. That's where I, that. it took where I said Lyme again. It said Lyme again. And that's where it wants to encourage right. consistent use of Lyme. So that's where, like, you know, obviously it's only as good as the information you're going to give it. Um, mm -hmm. But it, give, it gave me an ICD 10 code for primary open angle glaucoma, although I did not say both eyes, right eye, left eye, whatever. So that's where it's not as specific of a code as it should be. Oh, this is funny. See, this is where it's not perfect. It's saying that Lyme is generic Zydra. So that's where, you know, we're still going to get to be doctors and decide what goes in our charts. Right. Um, but this just makes it a little bit faster. Yeah. I mean, you know, and, and the other thing that, I, so I've, you have conversations too with colleagues who are, struggling with team, you know, trying to, you know, and for me, I, I had really gotten used to having a scribe in the room with me and my replacement option for that was to go with a virtual assistant, which has been brilliant. I mean, my virtual assistant is amazing. She does a great job. It's 
maybe not quite as good as it was having an actual scribe in the room. You know, so there's some downsides of it, but it's still, I, I can't tell you how many times I walk into a room, I set my surface on the counter and I say, Oh, by the way, Mrs. Jones, I want to introduce you to my virtual assistant. This is Honeylith. She's going to be taking notes for us while we're doing our exam. And then she waves at the camera, you know, and then they go, oh, my gosh, is that somebody real? I go, yes, it is. You know, and they asked me all about her. And I said, well, you can ask her yourself. And they just sit there, have a conversation while I'm spraying pure and clean on my hands and get ready to go to the exam. You know, so but this is a this is another opportunity for someone to do something that can get you to that level quickly without having to Mm -hmm. hire somebody. It's free. Um, You know, and it's F R E E free. Yeah. Free, 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 free. And so that, wow. Uh, You know, it's just, so another thing that I've done. So you see all this, this is um, text from, I took my surface pro up front and I met with a, the iSuvis rep. Um, And I said, I want you, you know, I'm, I'm taking notes right now and I want you to tell me how, you know, tell me the PA process, the coupon process, et cetera, for getting Isuvis for our patients. And so this is all of the text of our conversation. Um, you see no periods, no dashes, no commas, nothing. And so then, um, what did I say at the beginning? Use the following to make a step-by-step guide for how to cheaply get Isuvis for our patients while using their insurance. And so its output was um, step one, determine their insurance type. And this is all based on what our conversation was from that long text. Um, step two, for Medicare patients, it's going to be like this. For uh, for commercial patients, it'll be like this way. Um, and then know if the PA is done on the front end, the cost will be $40. If the PA is done after the coupon is um, put through, and so that's that's incorrect. It was The answer was 60 but it said $160. Um, so, but the, anyway, that's where you like, it's not perfect, but man, it makes a nice little skeleton. And I can add this. I've trying, I've been trying to make up, a, um, I've got a new person doing my PAs for me. And I wanted to just make a concise file of all the different medications we typically prescribe. And um, yeah, this, this has just made it so easy. I, I'm so obsessed with doing things in this way now that that's where I went to my daughter's. Um, and it's not going to work. I would refresh it, but I think it would cut it off. But I, I, I take I take this everywhere now. I went to my daughter's um, uh, open house. And she's in third grade, and I'm the room mom. And so I just turned it on while the teacher was giving a presentation to all the parents. I wanted to make sure that we, um, you know, didn't miss any details. And I, I said, you know, make this into a concise um, uh, outline of what the teacher said to us at parent night. And it did. And that's what I emailed out to everybody. So, I mean, like I look, you know, right this second, I think eventually this is going to be so commonplace, but right now it's not. And so right now I look like a rock star, like, wow, how'd you get that out? How'd you get that email out so fast? And really, I mean, I'm just like, I'm fast. (laughs) But. Yeah. Well, you know, when you're, when you're talking literally one in seven Americans haven't even dabbled with this. Um, you, it is, it is like magic. I mean, it is, it's hard to different def, to, to determine that this is not magic. Yeah. Well, that, and so I wanted to show you one more thing too. Um, oh, let's see if I can do this this way. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to paste, I went to, um, modern optometry, for example, the one, the article that I have copied is when the diagnosis is not glaucoma by Danica Morelli. Um, and so I'm going to paste this article in here. I am, so I'm going to say, I will have questions about the following article. So this is one thing I did the other day because I had, um, I had read this article. And when I say read this article, I had pasted it into chat GPT and said, give me the highlights. (laughs) Um, so that, so I have read, and I say that in air quotes, multiple, Mm -hmm. I think last time I was on this podcast with you, um, you had asked me about being a wife to one of our vendors and you know what that's like. And my answer then was, I don't have time to read all these publications that come across my desk. I really rely on these vendors to tell me about their products and you know, that kind of thing. Well, so I can, I can say now that I have read in air quotes, um, more articles in the past month than I have probably in the past year, because um, the things that you find interesting, you copy and paste it into chat GPT and say, give me a synopsis about this article. And it does. And if you want to ask if you let's just say it's about, um, you know, uh, AION, you say, you know, tell me more about AION and what, you know, what that would mean for, you know, um, 
this patient. And that's, that's exactly what I did. So I, 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 paste, I pasted this article into ChatGPT. And see, it's still doing soap for me. That's so funny. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm going to have to go back and edit it and say, do not put this in, chat, in soap format. Okay, I'll have questions about this following article. Do not read. Okay, let's just do it this way, actually. Let's do it this way. Um, so I've posted that whole long article. I'm going to say, give me an outline of this article. And so you see how long it is, right? It's very, very long. I'm scrolling down lots yeah. and lots of times. All right, I'm going to click Save and Submit. And now it is giving it to me in outline format with, you know, um, Roman numerals and bullet points. Yep. Bullet points. And so let's just say I wanted to know more. Um, so right now it's giving me all these different bullet points and visual field correlation um, is one of the bullet points. So I'm going to, you know, it's not super specific, right? Like I'm just sort of getting the outline of it all. Right. But if I wanted to know more, I'd say, um, tell me more about visual field correlation. And that's one of the bullet points. And so then it will go into, you know, be more specific about that bullet point. Um, and this is, you know, more from the article, which is so great. So that's where like, you can just go through things faster. You can go through, you can um, find articles that interest you read the outline, decide if you want to go in depth more. Maybe you want to read the actual article more. Um, but what I've done with this is I've pasted this in this, uh, in particular, this article is what I've pasted in here. And then I ask it a question clinically about my patient that was sitting in the chair um, because I had a patient that um, I had been following for glaucoma, but after the past couple of scans, things were just looking a little bit different. So I asked um, ChatGPT based on this article, what are other things that I need to be considering? Because here's what the patient is exhibiting right now um, as far as the OCT and that sort of thing. And and it gave me its suggestions, but obviously I'm the doctor and I get to decide if I really want to take those suggestions and run with it. Um, but it was, it really made me think about things in a way that I, that I hadn't before. And I think like in the medical field, that's where AI is going to take us is, um, is really kind of helping influence your clinical decisions. Let's see, what are some more things? It's just infinite. I can't even, I, it, I'm, I can't even tell you everything. You know, I'm still going back to the point though, of just your very first thing you did with it was to go in your kitchen, read the ingredients, that you're, read the stuff you had in your cabinets and say, create a meal for four people, for two children, two adults out of the stuff I just read to you. And bam, yes. you got supper, you know, and you know, it, it's, it's, it's time savers. It's, you know, so many other things that you can do and, it, you know, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm a little dumbfounded. I have to say, I'm, I, I, you know me, I don't not have something to say very often. And this is one of those th times where, and I've played with this thing. The problem for me has been not opening my mind up enough to really like play, play with it. And I think that's where, doing these things in other realms it really gives you an yeah. idea of what it really truly can do. It's, it's outside of what your, your daily life is like for those that don't get to see the screen. She has just typed in, I have chicken, onion, penny pasta, flour, gravy, diced tomatoes, chicken broth, deli meat, green beans, and three corn. cans. I said, of yeah, I meant to say corn, corn, but I said corn. <laughs> um, so I bet it, fixes it sounds it. like you have a variety of ingredients on hand. If you're looking to make a meal, you could consider creating a chicken and vegetable pasta dish. Here's a suggestion. Um, and so it gives you, it'll even give you like, um, step-by-step -step instructions on how to do it. Cook the pasta. Yeah. I had my, so this weekend we're, um, having, uh, my husband's golf, um, golf club has their member guest tournament. So we've got some guests in town and there's going to be lots of driving around and watching them play on the course this weekend. And so I was like, I want to, I want a Bloody Mary, but I don't want to, I don't, I'm not going to want to go buy all the stuff. I wonder if I have the stuff here to make it. So I had already told it what I had in my, in my house. Um, I have this giant can of diced tomatoes and, um, it told me how to make, um, Bloody Marys without, with, um, all of the spices in my kitchen and the diced tomatoes and what else there was some, and Worcestershire sauce. Anyway, I didn't have to go buy any Bloody Mary mix. I just made it myself. <laughs> yeah. I'm not, I'm That's saving awesome. money. I'm saving time. Super excited about it. Um, 
well, when it teaches us how to make bourbon, yeah, now yeah. we're going to be getting somewhere. Well, so and then so and people have talked about this a lot, but I, I think it's I think it's a good you can you can create um create a marketing plan for elite um, eye care, focusing on IPL, and I also want to improve my sales of Verilux XR. Um, let's do a three month marketing plan. XR design. Because not everybody's going to, you know. Okay. All right. Which, by the way, is a wickedly I'm good enjoying, lens, by I'm the way. I'm in progressives now, too. I'm enjoying it. I, oh, it's <gasps> Haley. 40. You've reached the level <laughs> of the rest of us. So, um, it gives me a marketing plan for elite eye care, three months. So, it talks about month one, awareness and education. Um, it goes into week one and two. What I would do after this is an email campaign. So I would, you know, instead of writing an email campaign myself, I would say, write an email campaign about, and I'm going to paste exactly what it said. Um, and then I'm going to say, I would like to send to, um, oh, no, back up. I'm going to say, my demographic of patients are ages 40 to 55, mostly female. What else? I mean, you could get as specific as you want. Upper, upper middle income, let's say, or, or whatever, whatever your demographic for your patients, the population yep. is, you could put something uh, okay. like that and, in there. Um, oh, and the other thing is, now this is an email, but if we were going to do social media, you could also say, and make sure it's keyworded to my location of Asheville, North Carolina, pertaining to dry eye or you know, it can help you find keywords. Um, it'll write the post for you and include the keywords. Um, it's as far as social media goes, it's awesome. Which, which is also another thing that was really, uh, for many that heard, uh, Bobby signs back, uh, about a year and a half ago on the, on the podcast, he talked about how important keywords were in, in your Google searches. And if you could, write your response to your Google reviews using your important keywords. You can start plugging that in there and your responses would automatically have those keywords put into them every single time. So when people are looking to find you and they're using your keywords, they'll find you more often because you've used your responses with those keywords. I mean, you could, I mean, so now you're making me want to respond to Google reviews with chat GPT by saying like looking up the keywords and know what those are and saying, respond to this Google review and make sure to include, you know, these keywords and it would do it. Yeah, you um, should. So this is the email that it wrote. It, you know, it did all this in like 30 seconds. And it's, again, I'm scrolling down several times to get to the bottom. Um, but, and it's about IPL and the benefits and real success stories from our patients. Um, so anyway, that's, it wrote that and I didn't have to think about it. So that's where like, when it gives you these skeleton outlines like this, like you can go into each bullet point and expand on it more. So you would, I would go in and say, all right, give me five posts for Facebook um, pertaining to um, showcasing before and after photos of IPL and including captions that emphasize the effectiveness of treatment. That's the thing it said, but I would ask it to do five posts for me and it would do that with keywords if you wanted it to. Um, yeah, it's just it one one day I spent about three hours, but I did probably like six months worth of marketing planning for my practice. I, I never been able to be that productive when it comes to marketing. But I can see where a rabbit hole would follow yes. with me for sure in a hurry. Uh, so that's another thing to keep in mind when you're going through this process is, you know, how far do you want to dig into this stuff and still can keep yeah. your sanity, I guess, you know? Um, but you know, wow. It, so as we, sort of wrap this in a, you know, in a bow, so to speak. I mean, this isn't just, you had to make it work though. This isn't something that just did by itself, you know, and that's, I think that's the thing that people tend to forget. This is not doing it for you. It's doing it with you. Uh, to quote uh, Sean Lemon, it, it's doing it with you. It's helping you see these things and bringing out this information um, where do you see this going next, Haley? Well, I think, you know, as far as my dream for this, and I, I, I know it's going to get there, 
is that I can just speak to a program and it's going to chart for me automatically in the appropriate places. Um, that, that's, that's my number one thing because I just hate charting so much. <laughs> um, but two, it's going to help you make decisions as far as financial decisions. I'm already doing that. Like I'm, I use, um, I'm going into Glimpse Live. I'm copying my um, key performance indicator, how I'm doing with those different metrics pasting it in there and asking it to give me suggestions on ways I can improve. Obviously that some of these programs are going to kind of do it a, a little bit, but this can expound on it even more. That's one thing that like I didn't get to show you because I'm not trying to show everybody all my information, um, but it's going to help you make your business decisions. Okay. Okay. One more thing. I have to do this because my husband would think I was not like doing y'all a favor if I didn't. He said, could this help me like win my fantasy football league? And I said, I bet it could. <laughs> I said, let's um, copy and paste the stats into it. So I, there's all these different stats that you can do. Uh, offensive line, defensive line, quarterbacks, tackles. I mean, all these different things that they give you. So I copy and pasted all of it in there, okay, which took some time because you can only do so much. You can't do too much text. Anyway, yeah. so I copy and pasted all of it in there. And I was like, who would be a good underdog? Like, what do you, considering this information that I have given you, who, who would be a good underdog? Who's expected to win? And who should we bet on as like an underdog win? Um, the Lions were the underdog. And I don't remember. Um, the, the Chiefs were the, ex, you know, the expected winner. But anyway, so the Lions, that Aaron's like, that's actually not a bad, that's actually not a bad, like, estimation. <laughs> or, or it's not a bad guess. And um, so, yeah, it might even help you, like, you know, win at Blackjack one day. I don't know. <laughs> It'll count your cards. <laughs> this is so cool. Well, yeah, well, let's not do this. I don't want to get blacklisted when we go to you know, places <laughs> we like to go to. Anyway. Wow, Haley. I mean, this is incredible. Thank you for spending time with us and showing us how, how and, and taking the magic away from it. And, and, you know, and showing us that this isn't going to take over the world. Well, not this week, at least. Um, but just play with this stuff, y'all. I mean, it's amazing what you can do with these things. Make some dinner. Do something fun. Uh, if you know, decide we're going to go on vacation next week. I all kind of neat stuff. We're do. really going to, sh when we Thank start you, sharing, when we start playing all of us, when we all start kind of messing around with it and figuring out these crazy things that we can do um, and sharing those things, that's when it's really going to get interesting. I'm excited to see what, where it takes us. I completely agree. Thank you. Thanks for being with us. 